Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Talking Sense. Today, we're going to be looking at Nouveau Monde by Louis Vuitton. Now this one is, it was in my full uh, 2019 list um, and I, I kind of said if anyone has any requests um, for ones they want to see full reviews of, let me know. Um, Mrs. Press chucked in a request for this one, which is really great because, spoiler alert, I really like it. So Nouveau Monde by Louis Vuitton. It's really interesting fragrance. Um, it doesn't really get a lot of talk, um, which I don't really understand. My best guess is that it's because it's from Louis Vuitton and it's they're not really a house that's known for their perfumes. I think they released a perfume in, in like the 1940s and then I think that just discontinued. It was um, called Voyage and I think it was discontinued pretty quickly. And then they re kind of released it uh, in like reformulated and re-released it in the 1980s for again a really short period and then dis uh, discontinued it so and then th they didn't release anything else since so really they're, they're, they're a kind of oddball in the fashion house in that they don't have a perfume arm uh, you know an extension of their brand in the perfume sector until recently so that changed in 2016 when they released their first collection, which uh, included Matière Noir, uh, this one. And uh, that was their first ever collection, say, since Voyage. Um, and it was pretty good, but it, say, it, was, it again, it was pretty quietly received. And then two years later, 2018, they saw the second collection. Now, the big difference in collections are... Um, the first collection was mainly marketed towards women and the second collection was mainly marketed towards men. Now, I think that there are definitely a lot of crossover and unisex in both collections. Uh, the only difference on to look at the collections are the caps. Uh, the, on the 2016 collection, they had like a gold LV, if you can see that. And in the 2018 collection, it had like a gunmetal LV um, in the top cap. That's it. Otherwise, they both use these really nice bottles, these kind of apothecary bottles. Um, and both collections were made by Jacques Cavalier, who is the guy who made um, Lodicy. So, kind of a legend in my book. Um, yeah, they're, they're, after that, they did release a, a third collection, I think 2019, maybe even this year. Um, but that's sort of come out in drips and drabs and that includes the the darker bottles um with the gold text on it um uh, including the one that gets the most sort of chatter that i've seen is uh ombre nomad or ombre nomad uh which is interestingly i think more or less a flanker of nouveau monde uh it, it seems to me from everything i've read that it, it is just like nouveau monde intense if you like like that kind of typical intense flanker um but anyway back to nouveau monde what is it it's a rose oud at its heart but there's some interesting stuff going on and it's don't just turn it off because like there, it's much more interesting than just a rose oud so what does it smell like i've got the dry down here um we'll give it a fresh spray um and i'll walk you through it I, I'm pretty familiar with it, uh, but we'll give it a spray because why not? Let's enjoy perfume, right? So when you first spray it, the sprayer is, is really nice, by the way. Um, when you first spray it, it's very perfumey. Um, it, it definitely sort of strikes out with a, with a very perfume up front. Oh yeah, the notes. Let's talk about the notes. So before I go into it, the actual notes for Nouveau Monde are cacao, saffron, rose, oud and amberwood, uh, vanilla, olibanum, leather and caramel. And, and I would actually say that that's pretty transparent. Uh, so let's, yeah, let's talk about what it smells like now. The main notes for me in that opening are the rose, which is a, a lovely Turkish rose, quite dark. Um, and I'll talk a lot more about that rose in a second. Um, the other big notes are saffron. Um, for me, it's a really big saffron bomb when you open it, uh, when it opens. Um, 
and it's very sort of opulent velvet comes with all those kind of things you expect from saffron very velvety and soft uh, and, it, and it does sort of open it with this big comfy soft velvet saffron uh the, the 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 third and last kind of main notes from the opening is the oud now the oud in this is quite an interesting one um it's cambodian oud and apparently it's real oud uh i, I actually don't doubt that uh, i think for once i think they're genuinely it really is sort of i, I don't think any in fact they don't even shout about it all they say is oud from cambodia which you know it's quite a subtle you know that, that that doesn't really sort of they're not shouting hey this is a natural oud but i definitely think it is the reasons for that are because in this fragrance especially in this open it has so much depth it has so much uh nuance that i don't think it's either a, a, a real genuine oud or cavalier has done like an absolute master stroke with uh, uh you know some other ingredients to make a, a an oud a cord but i really genuinely think this is actual cambodian oud in here um now interestingly say cambodian oud i'm not like a connoisseur when it comes to ouds I, i'm not even that much of a fan um but everything that i understand of cambodian oud is that it's the kind of the it's the fecal oud you know it's the it's the shitty dirty oud um that 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 tends to kind of put people's backs up in this it's not really fecal at all but it's definitely definitely barnyard as hell um, so when you first spray it, doesn't really start out barnyardy. It starts out like a very dark wood, um, and it has these kind of resinous leather elements that sort of start it up. So from the opening, say this perfume, you've got big saffron. You've got this rose, which is this dark Turkish rose, very very subdued um, and quite juicy, um, a touch jammy, I would say. It like sort of smells a little bit fruity um and it and it but it's very subdued and it stays subdued in this fragrance uh later it gets a little bit more lively and interesting uh, but I'll, I'll i'll talk about that later but in the opening it, it's this quite juicy subdued dark so slightly gently smoked rose uh it's really really nice i'm not a huge rose fan and i like it in this so then you've got the saffron this big comfy velvety saffron then you've got this oud which is this sort of smoked dark wood uh with these kind of resinous leathery facets uh but the leathery facets are, 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 are right now they're not barnyardy they're it, it's very much like a polished waxed worked processed leather feels really sort of high class a little bit got a, a touch of suede which is obviously helped with that saffron but it's got a touch of a kind of suede texture to it. Feels very, very, very class. Um, then, in about 10 minutes, I say that's what I've got right now. But in about 10 ish minutes into the wear, and it will last for about 30 minutes, you get this real kind of like dark, broody, animalic barnyard stank that just creeps up underneath it. And it's real barnyard I, it, it gets I, I would say it gets quite challenging for about 30 minutes i love it to bits i think it's beautiful and i think it's tempered and um, by some of the other notes which we'll talk about but it definitely definitely has like a bit of a barnyard stench to it <clears throat> definitely animalic definitely this sticky resinous barnyard stench um and it's gorgeous and the reason it's gorgeous is because it's tempered like it shouldn't be but it's tempered by uh at the same time as the, the that that starts sort of brewing up a little bit you get a bit more of that um olibanum which is probably helping uh with that kind of resinous feel um and at the same time the cacao comes out the cacao is like this slightly gently powdered sort of dark chocolatey feel but it doesn't feel like gourmand chocolatey it feels like a powdered cacao uh and at the same time also start getting a touch of vanilla it says it's caramel in there I, I don't necessarily i would never put my finger on it and say that smells like caramel for me it doesn't have that much of a gourmand element for me it's just like a, a soft 
creamy vanillic sweetness at the like underneath um but it's really really minimal this fragrance is not that sweet um it has its sweet elements with saffron and things like that but it isn't this big kind of gourmand vanilla -y caramel bomb either um it's very much just just in the bottom there and it tempers that kind of animalic leather vibe it, it, it brings it back a little bit and it helps to make it feel that sort of suede uh, and it, and all of this kind of helps to make that barnyard element temper itself and, and, and stay below the surface so what you end up with is this opulent rich suede like leather and saffron and cacao with this very sort of mysterious dark undertone to it that has this animalic danger and i love it i think it's really really nice i think it's really sexy i think it's really really interesting i think it gives it a lot of depth and dynamic sort of nuance um but at the same time it never gets stinky it never gets nasty it always retains this kind of high road you know this kind of it always keeps itself utterly wearable uh, and appealing but it really you can't deny like underneath it all is this stench and it's and it's real barnyard real animalic stench uh, and it's it's just glorious i think it's fantastic i really do think it's great um along with all this you've got this very very gentle smoked wood going on um that that sort of again for me the, the, I think with this fragrance, everything about this fragrance, for me, everything that all of the, the, the kind of things that give it real character and individuality are really restrained. And I, I actually really like it for that. I think it's it balances everything really well. So it has this smoked element to it, but it's really dialed back and, and really underneath a, again, like just sort of almost sitting below everything just smoking away um and it adds a bit of depth a bit more darkness and um, but it never gets like smoky and uh, and too much it's always just smoking away just smoldering underneath everything and that's really nice uh again it makes it uh, it brings it down a little bit dark um so at the, for this period which sadly only lasts about half an hour you've got this like powdered cacao uh, and saffron top and then in the middle this very suede leather that feels very polished worked and and gorgeous and and, and quite opulent and then un below that again you've got this stanky barnyard stench with gentle smoke um and it's uh, sort of all kind of backed up by a very very creamy soft sweetness um and it's I really, really, really rate it. I think it's really good. Sadly, that doesn't last forever. After about half an hour, that all starts coming down. Um, and it doesn't get bad at all, but it gets very linear. Um, and what happens is, I'll switch to the kind of dry down. It, it all just tempers, basically. The, 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 the simplest way to put it is it just... Every, all of those kind of individual elements just temper down so you don't get any of the, the barnyard stench completely disappears it like completely and you're left with just a very kind of refined leather suede leather feel um the saffron gets a little bit more herbal feeling um it sort of drops a bit of sweetness and it it becomes more like a herbal kind of feel uh the cacao gets a little touch more powdery um and outside of that the smoke drops right back and it becomes just a, a, a woody sort of gentle smoked woody vibe um and, but everything in it is is really tempered and down and relaxed um and it becomes just really smooth and chic and kind of sleazy in a way uh it drops a lot of the darkness but it becomes really easy to wear it's super classy and it, it just smells great and it's it's very linear from there on you'll you'll get that for the rest of the wear which is pretty much all day 
the last kind of hurrah that it has, I guess, is it starts throwing up a, a very gentle rosewood, sandalwood um, incense. Uh, and that sort of melds with that sort of very subtly smoked wood at the bottom. But it's it's it really is just a kind of I think that's more as the saffron tempering and stuff. It kind of gets sort of blended in with the woods and you start getting that kind of incense vibe. And, and, then, and that's it, really. That That's the end of it. And it's glorious all the way from start to finish. Oh, I didn't really talk about the rose. So the rose in this really interesting. It flips in and out. And it's always really dialed back and it and it it feels to me like it's always kind of just ghosting in and out of the fragrance so sometimes you don't even smell it and other times it just kind of creeps in and just shows its head and then it zips out again it's a really elusive sort of um lively note in this fragrance it, it really kind of just flits in and out of the fragrance occasionally just streaks through the middle but it's always kind of like there and then gone and in and out. It's 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 a really nice rose, really dialed back. It's not this heavier rose fragrance. To me, it's it's more leather renewed with this kind of rose supporting rather than with some Oudem roses where you get, you know, the Oudem rose with the rose as the big showpiece. It's, it, it's the opposite in this. It's, it's definitely the the, the the suede leather and oud is definitely the showpiece with the rose just supporting it with that sweetness so yeah who's it for um i think it leans masculine but i think because of all everything i just said i, I think yeah, i think you can guess it, it's it's pretty much banging your sex if you wear oud roses as, as a woman you'll be absolutely fine with this it's not gonna shock you at all it's not gonna feel too masculine um if you do make you feel like you want something a little bit more feminine, say Mattia Noir is very similar in a lot of respects, but it tempers the leather and it boosts the suede element. Um, and at the same time, it adds some things like some jasmine um, and a bit of florals. I'll do a review on this one as well because it's again, it's beautiful. Um, it, it says it's, it, it's, I would say these are almost like flankers of one another. You could almost say like this is like poor home and this is like poor femme or whatever it's it's really like uh that they've got really a, a few similarities um so the difference is the jasmine kind of sticks its head up in this one and the the floral elements kind of display themselves a bit more um and it um it shows a bit more of its suede the, the, the leather's a lot softer and a lot less kind of bang and in your face and it's a bit softer and a bit more suede whereas this one has that suede element but it's more like leather and animalic this definitely has animalic, uh, that the same animalic kind of grittiness to it but it it, it, it it tempers it with a suede vibe so yeah that's you know if, if you feel like this might be a touch of masculine i don't think it will i think it's i think these are both pretty unisex actually i think the difference being if this was on a spectrum and that was kind of like bang middle dead unisex they're just either side of it whereas this one point in masculine and this one point in feminine you know but they're they're, they're both pretty close to the center uh in terms of when you'd want to wear it i think it's an, an evening fragrance um but i've worn it day and evening and it totally works uh, i think it does i think it's versatile completely versatile i think it's actually like a four season anytime fragrance anywhere but it lends itself to evening because it's got that kind of dark, mysterious element to it. It's really sexy. And um, if you wear it in the evenings, it's really sexy. It's very sultry. It's quite, you know, it's it's a it's pretty raunch. But if you wear it in the daytime, it does have that classy element that you, that lets you pull it off really. Uh, and it's just, that works the same with dressing it up and down. If you dress it up. It's definitely classy. It's chic and classy, and it can absolutely hold its own uh, with with any anything else in the room. Um, if you dress it down, it, it, that's totally fine too, uh, because that kind of leathery kind of vibe. It, it, you can dress it down, and it and it works. I, I like. I would say you see. I, I don't. I mean, if you've seen my reviews, I don't. I often don't spray bottles this low, uh, but it's really good. Uh, so. In terms of price and that, they're quite expensive. They're like £185, $220, I think. Um, but 
you can take them they are refillable so um you can take them to the lb boutique and they'll just refill them which is and, and it's cheaper so that's not too bad personally do i think it's worth that absolutely i i i'll refill this immediately when i run out and i'll be very upset in the time that i don't have it between like running out and visiting the lv boutique it won't be long you know i'll run this out and i'll take it to the lvb boutique as soon as i can and um, would I, I i you know i recommend everyone sample it first but i i would even go as far as saying if you like oud roses and or oud scents and you like saffron and um, things like um mfk oud satimu things like that <clears throat> excuse me if you like those sorts of fragrances or you think you might like those sorts of fragrances you could blind buy this this i i would i would happily recommend a blind buy for this it's that good and i and i i think that probably says more than anything else i can probably say on this channel because i rarely recommend people just go blind buy something that's nearly 200 pound or you know 220 dollars if you've got that sort of money and you're gonna spend it on a fragrance and you like you feel like you want something for the colder weather especially because this really shines in the cold weather like i say four seasons fine but in the colder weathers it, it'll nail it I, I genuinely think it's that good uh I, i've banged on about this so is there any negatives absolutely i just said this is really versatile for me i can't wear this in the high high heat um and I think it's a consequence again of, and it's what makes me think that this has probably really got real wood in it, is when I, it, when it's really hot, it reacts really badly with my skin chemistry and it starts kicking up this sweaty, um, sour milk vibe uh, that's kind of disgusting. And it's, it's got this kind of sweet, sour milk rankness. Uh, so I can't wear it in the high heat because if, say, if I start getting quite sweaty at work or whatever, then it, it really starts chucking up uh, as just a it, quite a stomach turning uh, concoction. That could just be my skin chemistry, but it's, it definitely has done that. Another thing I find quite strange about it, I'll try and get a, a recording of it. It seems to sweat itself in the bottle. I find that quite grim, but again, that, that makes me think that it probably does have real lewd in it. I'm not sure if that's what it is, um, but yeah. Otherwise, fantastic fragrance, really, really nice. One of my top fragrances. Um, uh, when I do my kind of roundup for this year, this will, you know, because I'm going to do kind of a, a kind of roundup for the fragrances I've had on the channel this year and do like a top 10 of what I've done on the channel. This will be up there. This is really one of my favorite fragrances. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say it's like a masterpiece or anything like that because I think that those sorts of words are kind of. Mm, dangerous and i'm also not going to sit here and say that another word that i don't really like that could be applied to this is people could say like it's niche quality or whatever because it's quite expensive you know the, to talk about the ingredients uh, it, you might say it's like niche quality but what does that really mean it doesn't you know i've got plenty of niche that are pretty low quality i would say this smells really high quality ingredients and i really do think it's worth the money um having said all of that i'm now gonna tell you all that you shouldn't buy it because one of the things that i do really like about this fragrance is and the fact that no one really talks too much or gives any hype about the louis vuitton fragrances is that no one really smells like this and i can wear this and be quite unique so don't go and buy it bugger off nice one cheers